what's going on everybody? Lee Dickey here, comedian, actor, producer, reviewer, and welcome to the Lee Dickey TV YouTube channel. If this is your first time here, please hit the subscribe button, ring that bell, and turn on notifications so you never miss another upload. Please do follow me on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Lee T. Dickey and visit my official website, LeeTDickey.com. Com. If you would, please subscribe to both my podcasts, the Beats and Speaks podcast and Yo Nostalgia. Please do comment, like, subscribe, and share on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts as well. Please and thank you. Leave us a five-star rating and review. That really helps us out a lot. But thanks for tuning in to the Lee Dickey TV YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. Now let's get on to today's video. Introduce your little ones with lullaby versions of shock rock legend Alice Cooper classic songs. I tell you more next. Yes, check this out. The company Twinkle Twinkle Little Rockstar has released a lullaby instrumental album consisting of well, lullaby versions of classic Alice Cooper songs. So you have songs like No More Mr. Nice Guy. Feed My Frankenstein, which is my personal favorite Alice Cooper song, Only Women Bleed. Welcome to My Nightmare, which is on there. It's a collection of 18 songs. Today, I just want to give you a history of how I was introduced to Alice Cooper's music and like how I fell in love with it, and even a history on, you know, there's a backstory of me finding one of these lullaby instrumental albums that is meant for your little ones, that is meant for your babies that are still in that let's sing them lullabies to get them to sleep tonight in their crib type of stage. So hang on just a second. As I said, the track listing, which is in this article that I found from NME.com, which I will list in the show notes and description for you all, so you can check this out for yourselves, Track listing includes Poison, Only Women Bleed, my personal favorite, Feed My Frankenstein. I'm sorry if I butchered the song there, Alice. Please don't hurt me. But um, you Feed My Frankenstein, Poison, Only Women Bleed, Welcome to My Nightmare, School's Out, No More Mr. Nice Guy. It is 18 classic Alice Cooper songs and I mean you can't go wrong if you want to introduce your kids to Alice Cooper's music without say the lyrics that you might not want them to hear yet because they are so little then I'd say this is the way to go get this album record however you're gonna listen to it listen to this album because it's just lullaby instrumental versions because if you want them to say appreciate this type of music, introduce it to them early. But, you know, if you're not looking for, say, the suggestive lyrics or the lyrics that you might not want them to hear, uh, because obviously his music and a lot of music is meant for, say, older minds, shall we say, like whether you're an adult or like teenager. But, you, you know, you should be older before you start listening to certain music you know and i'm realizing that as i get older that maybe you know when i was introduced to alice cooper's music or any music that i do listen to and appreciate now maybe i should have been a bit old uh should have been a bit older uh, before i listened to it but you know that's a little disclaimer for me like you can appreciate the music now i mean i can appreciate it now that i'm in my 30s but you know, as a kid, maybe I shouldn't have been listening to it, and I can look back at that with the benefit of 2020 hindsight, you know what I mean? So if you don't want to introduce your kids to, let's say, the lyrical versions of, you know, music and songs from some of your favorite artists as parents or expectant parents, then I would go with getting these albums from Twinkle Twinkle Little Rockstar, these instrumental albums to that contains songs of some of today's most well-known artists. And this one specifically, uh, 
features Alice Cooper's songs, some of his catalog, which is extensive. How I was introduced to Alice Cooper's music and to Alice Cooper himself, basically, I've never actually met Alice Cooper, but how I was introduced to Alice Cooper's music um, is there are a couple different avenues that I took to sort of become a fan of Alice Cooper. So one avenue was the movie Wayne's World because Feed My Frankenstein is featured in the movie and I think it's even on the soundtrack. So And I saw that movie as a kid and just Alice Cooper coming out on stage and it's even featured in the music video for Feed My Frankenstein. Like Alice Cooper coming out on stage just all done up in character, the makeup, the long hair, the leather jacket. Just the entire outfit. I think he had a cane with him too, or a whip of some kind. And just all you hear is that intro, Feed my Frankenstein. And I can't sing, so I'm sorry for your ears. But you get the idea. That giant intro, he busts through this skull that's painted on a black backdrop. He enters and they ju it, it, he just rocks it out. I know it's in a movie. But to me, that just sort of like drew me in to Alice Cooper as an artist. And that's specifically why Feed My Frankenstein is one of my favorite songs. I mean, in the movie, they, you know, parody um, Laverne and Shirley and Dana Carvey as, uh, Dana Carvey as um, Garth Algar. Just looks over at Mike, Mike Myers, uh, Wayne Campbell, and just says, Hey, man, what are we doing? And they're all just like, Yeah, we got tickets to see Alice Cooper. And then they just cut to this Alice Cooper concert, and Alice Cooper enters through that. He busts through this wall. It's got a skull on it, black painted backdrop, and they roll into. They just bust into um, Feed My Frankenstein, and that's just, it's ingrained in me. I haven't seen Wayne's World in ages. It's been many, many years. So maybe I'll go back and watch that at some point in the very near future. But that's part of my history with being introduced to Alice Cooper's music, and we'll get to more in just a second. Another avenue I took to sort of become a fan of Alice Cooper and get introduced to his music was through my dad. My dad was a fan of Alice Cooper, the group, I think going back to the 60s, because that's when that group was formed, the Alice Cooper band or the group, whatever they were called uh, when they were first signed to, or signed by Frank Zappa. And they released Pretties For You, Love It To Death. I think my dad actually had those two records those two lps at some point either in a previous house or maybe even shortly after we got here like he brought those with him i don't know whether he sold them but i mean those are two monumental sort of alice cooper records i think to my knowledge like between i think 18 which is one of alice cooper's biggest hits whether as a group, as a band, or as an individual, uh, I think that song came off of Pretties For You in 69. Uh, if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments or, you know, in a review of the Beats and Speaks podcast because that's probably where this show is going to end up or this where this episode is going to end up. So, to my knowledge, 18, which was arguably... Alice Cooper's first big hit that really sort of skyrocketed this shock rock I don't even want to call it a phenomenon but this shock rock wave shall we say I think that came off of Pretties For You in 69 uh, uh, unfortunately I never did listen to I never have listened to my dad's records the ones that he has whether they were Alice, Co Alice Cooper ones or the ones that we still have in the basement. I think we've still got uh, a Pink Floyd record. I don't know which one. Uh, I know that they're 
or a few others, probably a couple of Beatles records down there as well. Uh, Cause he was, that's where his musical tastes were, at least to my knowledge, like the Beatles, he would constantly listen to them. There were some Pink Floyd, some Alice Cooper, and just a bunch of things thrown in. Steve Miller was another one of his favorites. And I just, you know, I've never listened to any of his old records because we've never had a working turntable. So, and I don't know whether they're warped or not because I haven't seen them in many, many years. Like, I rarely have ever gone down to the basement, and that's where they are. So, you know, maybe someday when I get a bit older um, and I'm starting to slow down, I don't know, maybe, you know, I'll get a turntable one day and then just, you know, put the needle to the record and let it run. Just, I'd love to be able to do that. I just never have had um the ability to or the i've never had enough equipment to get that stuff to run so you know that's just one of those things i mean we still have some of my dad's old records i've never been able to listen to them but you know um to my knowledge from, from if my memory serves me right yeah he had pretties for you and love it to death at one point I'm, again not sure whether he sold them or not but you know, those are arguably, you know, two of Alice Cooper's best albums, you know what I mean? Like, you had Billion Dollar Babies in there, too. And it just, those were arguably, again, some of his best early recordings, you know what I mean? Um, again, where I come into this whole, like, loving Alice Cooper thing is my dad also had an affinity and a love for compact discs cds because those were the next things that we had anyway after records right after like 33s or 45s we had cds and my dad i think had a membership to columbia house and you know he had a couple alice cooper sort of greatest hits compilation cds which had Feed My Frankenstein, Billion Dollar Babies, Welcome to My Nightmare, School's Out, No More Mr. Nice Guy, Under My Wheels, and so Poison, so on and so forth. You know, and it just, I would play those constantly. Like, I'd get home from school, say 3.34 in the afternoon, because I lived relatively, or at the time, I lived relatively close to each of the schools that I went to, but it was just like, I'd get home and we had a CD player, uh, in the, in the nineties. And it was just, I think we bought the CD player that also had a, a tape deck. Like the CD player function does not work. We still have that CD player. The CD player function does not work on the CD player anymore, but the tape deck does the radio still does. Um, and that CD player tape deck, speaker combo is i want to roughly say it's from 1994 it's a sharp sort of cd tape deck player thing and it just it's yeah it's from like 1994 so and it still works for the most part the only problem is that the cd function just doesn't work anymore but i remember coming home and then just taking out either you know alice cooper compilation cd and just putting them in that stereo and hitting play. You know, and when it would get to, say, Feed My Frankenstein, which, as I've said, is my favorite Alice Cooper song of all time, or I, I just, it's my favorite Alice Cooper song, right? Right? Like, that's, if I'm doing my, a list of my favorite Alice Cooper songs, that's number one every time, for me anyway. So when it would get to Feed My Frankenstein, I'd always put that on repeat, you know, for two or three times and then go through the rest of the records or albums and it was just it made me feel good to connect with him at least you know connect with my dad on what some of his favorite music is and that's just how I became sort of a fan and enthralled with like the Alice Cooper character and Alice Cooper's music and to this day I'm still a huge fan of Alice Cooper and when he puts out new music, that's always like, has he got anything out? Has Is there anything new? Like, I would always, I'll always go stream it, you know, 
buy it on like iTunes nowadays. But Alice Cooper will always be like one of my favorite artists ever. Bar none. Like I will always buy his records and or albums or whatever you want to call them and just throw them on play them constantly and just sort of zone out and forget anything that's going on in the world right now like that's just one of those things alice cooper is like the man to me and that's just how i became a fan of alice cooper and his music now getting back to this twinkle twinkle little rock star lullaby instrumental versions of well-known songs by you know today's hottest artists how i came to discover them was by complete accident and it's actually really really funny i i love going to thrift stores you know what i mean i just love going through thrift stores to just look at what's available like what they're selling you know and i will buy things from thrift stores all the time that's just another one of those things you just if you always go to the thrift store if you're looking for something that's that was super expensive it might not be super expensive if you go to the thrift store i mean they're second hand yes but for the most part things that you find there are in good shape and when it comes to say like these lullaby instrumental albums i happen to be going through a local value village and they still have a CD section, right? I mean, not that I listen to CDs now, but I was going through the CD section and I found this CD that was Twinkle Twinkle Little Rockstar and all that good stuff. And I just kind of like, what is this? You know, and it was a dollar, right? But it was the, it was the Kanye West uh, sort of lullaby instrumental album, the Twinkle Twinkle Little Rock Star Kanye West Greatest Hits uh, lullaby instrumental record or album. I say record album. You guys know what I'm talking about. Record album, CD. It it was just it was a compilation of lullaby versions of Kanye West songs. You had Good Life, you had Homecoming, I think, was on that CD. It just several college uh the workout the new workout plan and I just I it was a dollar and I was like, should I buy it? I don't know. And I left it there, you know, and just I you went up to the counter, cashed out with what I had previously before I went to the CD rack. And I'd gone to a local coffee shop and was talking to a guy about it. And he was like, oh, that would be really cool. That That's actually really cute. You know, I would want that. Light bulb idea goes off. Probably three or four days later, I go back to that same value village and the the Kanye West lullaby instrumental album is still there and it's still a dollar so okay it's a buck I invest the dollar and actually I think I know how this came about like I'd gone to that local coffee shop and he I had mentioned that I had been to this local value village and just gone through their CD section and had mentioned the Dixie Chicks, who are now just known as the Chicks, and he had told me how how much of a fan of theirs he was, and I just thought, oh, that's cool, and I, I like we got to talking about their albums, but I couldn't remember the names of the albums of the uh, the Dixie Chicks, now known as the Chicks, that I had pulled. I couldn't remember the names of the, those CDs, but I had mentioned that there was this Kanye West sort of lullaby instrumental album that was there and it was like a dollar and then he told me he's like hey yeah like I that sounds actually really cool I would want that and I just you know thought light bulb idea ding 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 
why don't I just invest a dollar? So I went back three or four days later. The album was still there. I bought it. And I wasn't even looking for the dollar back. I'm like, well, whatever. He wants it. And it's a gift for him. So I was like, all right, man. I went back to that coffee shop the day, maybe that same day or the day after I bought it. And I was like, is he here? So they brought him out of the back. I go, yeah, here you go, man. That's the... There's your uh, the lullaby CD that you wanted, and he was over the moon. He was happy about it. So I mean, to that effect, I mean, it it ended well for me. It ended well for him. I could give somebody something that they wanted, and you know, like all was good. So that is sort of my history with Alice Cooper and these lullaby instrumental albums. You put them all together and you get this episode. I'm a fan of Alice Cooper. Not so great. Like, yeah, I'm not going to say that I'm not a fan of like lullaby instrumental albums. Cause I'm just, it's not my demo, right? That's I'm not in that age group anymore. But if you want to introduce your kids to say your favorite artist, but you're a little concerned cause they might be too young to understand the lyrical content or you don't want to introduce it to them just yet then i would think that these instrumental twinkle twinkle little rock star albums and compilations are the way to go so i would honestly go pick this album up on your favorite music service go stream it on i think it's on apple music spotify all the majors now i will link the article that i found all this information in in the show notes and description down below. Thanks again for watching. Please do take care and we'll talk to you later. Peace. Thanks for tuning in to Lee Dickey TV on YouTube. Please remember to subscribe, comment, like, and share as well. Please do subscribe to both my podcasts, the Beats and Speaks podcast and Yo Nostalgia on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, or your favorite podcast app and player of choice. Leave us a five-star rating and review as well. Follow the fun on social media at Lee T. Dickey. That's on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And find out more information about me on my official website, LeeTDickey.com. All the links are in the description and show notes down below. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Lee Dickey, comedian, actor, producer, reviewer, and we will see you next time. Peace!